What's up guys, Johnny Stedham here. Today, we're gonna dig into the Johnny Jigs Pro Jigger Rod and the components that make it up and what makes it such a great rod. Then, we're gonna cruise on over to RJ Boyle Studio where we stock his shop and we do a four part series on slow pitch jigging. But first, we're gonna go catch some fish. We're just a few guys that decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We want to fill you in on what we have learned along the way. So we headed out of the Boyne Inlet with Jose. He's a guy that he comes into our shop a lot. He loves to talk slow pitch jigging. Uh, but one thing about Jose is he's well known for uh, fishing for marlin. Um, whether it's been in South America tournament fishing or in Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands. Um, big sport fish, big game fish. Um, it's really his thing and he's fished um, a lot of tournaments. Uh, ended up on top on quite a few tournaments as well. And that's really like his, his thing. So we headed out of the Boynt Inlet um, on his Bertram, uh, which is just such a nice boat. I mean, it just, it's not like the sport fishing uh, center consoles that, that we're used to being on that jump the waves and whatnot. I mean, it just, it just cruises right through the waves. It's a really smooth boat. And uh, we were excited to head out. Our main goal for the day was to get into some mutton snapper. We started out in about 260 feet of water and um, I was fishing my flatback silver, uh, 190 gram jig, and I was working the jig just doing a, a quarter pitch with a, a long pull, and I was staying pretty tight to the bottom, and I hooked up. You got him, Floppy! You got him on! Try to go to the other side, of oh, you're good still. All right. Woo! We got him on! I knew it wasn't a big fish, but it felt like the right species. The way it was tugging and the positioning of my jig tells me that, you know, I'm on the bottom and this could be, uh, you know, a keeper, but, but not a big fish. It wasn't keeper, but at least it was showing that we were in the right spot. You can step on the black one if you want. Yeah, there you go, there you go. good start. Not the big fish I was looking for, but it's a good start. Then it was Will's turn. Will hooks up on a big fish. What's going fish. on guys? We got Will hooked up back there. This uh, gulped my 250 gram. Uh, whoa. Not guava, but what's the other one? and just started yanking and peeling line. It was probably down around 200 feet. What are we, Jose, 250? You're right now at 279, brother. Probably grabbed it up around two and a quarter or so, because I was at the back of the boat. As Will was fighting this fish, you could see as he got towards the surface, there's this big barracuda that that kind of cruised up to check him out and you could tell he was big because this aj was a decent size and you could see this barracuda off in the distance just eyeballing him you know thinking about an easy easy lunch and then he kind of cruises away and lands this fish and gets him on, on the deck and I'm, I'm pretty sure Will was that was it for him he was done for the day because this these amberjacks they fight like no other fish in the water I mean they are just powerhouses in the water the strength that they have um, and just the size of them really allows them that Woo, big old doggy you want to see you like a picture with him and stuff Chicken oh, its mouth. Probably should. You want that? Yeah, hell yeah. We could 
What's up guys? Today I got an exciting new rod, the Pro Jigger by Johnny Jigs and Witch Doctor that I want to tell you guys about today. So Adam from Witch Doctor put this rod in our hands, a prototype similar to this but not quite it, and wanted us to take it out, test it out, see what we can come up with, and, and develop a rod together. So we fished this rod in our backyard here in Pompano Beach. We've also taken it out to Pulley Ridge on the Yankee Cap um, halfway ledge. We fished it quite a bit, prototypes, and then also was able to take a finished product out there and fish it as you've seen in one of our uh, last videos. So we are excited about this. We feel like this is a great rod and I want to tell you about it. So the first thing I can tell you about this rod is that it's made from a Torrey graphite that comes from Japan. So the blanks are made here in the US, but they use the Torrey graphite, which comes from Japan, and then they roll the blanks here, which makes it a very, very nice, high quality blank. Besides the fact that it has a high modulus carbon wrapping on top of the blank as well. And then it's coated with a polyurethane coating, which gives it three great steps into building a very quality rod. And it still only comes in at seven ounces. And the next thing that I would like to tell you guys about is the EVA grips that we put on this. And we put these on here for a very certain reason and a special reason. The first thing is we extended that front grip a little bit further out there for the reason of fishing on the Yankee cap or even fishing on your own boat that has a rail. It gives you that little spot that you can go ahead and feel safe about sticking your blank onto the rail. And then also it gives you that little extra grip to where you can reach up here and fight a fish. And then as you go further back on to the, to the rod on the EVA grip here, it's just a little extra extension of cushion here, which we might modify as time goes um, to make it a little bit shorter, which, which we think might be a little bit better. But this is the most important one and the critical one that we've added that you're not seeing on slow pitch rods. It's the one right here. And the idea of this, this middle cushion right here, because of its tapered edge, fits nice and neat right on your forearm right there and then the next bonus about this is that once you've hooked up with a the fish then you slide it underneath your arm here now you have a little bit of cushion on your rib cage i don't know if anybody's ever had uh sore ribs from fishing uh, and jigging all day and fighting big fish but um that little extra cushion is nice and then the third thing about this guy right here that you're not going to find when it sits in the rod holder on your boat. It now has that cushion that actually protects the blank from rattling around. And that's a big deal. I personally have, have lost the rod uh, from sitting in, in the rod holder. And the idea, you know, you're supposed to, to you know, throw a cushion on your other ones or even slide a jig wrap on there. And you know, it's my fault, it's user error that it broke off and I forgot to put that cushion on um, and, and it broke off. But now it just, just kind of takes the thinking out of it and now you have something that's always there, it's not gonna move and it's gonna work. And then the final thing is um, we put a gimbal on the end. The gimbal also has uh, the grooves in it, so that way when it sits in the rod holder, it's not spinning around, as well as it's still rounded on the end, so if you really wanted to, you can go ahead and stick this rod into your hip um, and fight a fish or even um, um, jig um, at moments whenever you're not feeling quite like putting it across your forearm. So the next thing that I want to get into on this uh, rod is the Alps Aluminum Reel Seat and also it has Alps guides going down. But so the first thing that may come to your mind um, if, you're, if you're an experienced uh, slow pitch jigger is you're gonna say, well, you're losing the parabolic bend um, in, this, in this reel seat because the reel seat's stiff. But what I can tell you and just watching the production of this and watching how it's built, that inside of this is actually a gasket and so the parabolic bend actually continues through the reel seat all the way from the tip to the butt. And that makes it awesome. Um, I've heard stories of, of reel seats breaking. I don't think you could break this reel seat um, on a fish. I think it would have to be uh, something uh, definitely not fishing related in order to break this reel seat. So I would have a, there's a level of confidence that comes in um, to, to securing your um, rod, your reel, to this rod that you're not going to lose it it's not going to be problematic you know it's going to just work um, you know keeping the american angler in mind as, as we were building this and, and i know i know how i am um, i know how a lot of my buddies are 
you know, that fish here in the U.S. and we want stuff to just work. And that was really the idea. We, were, we had the American angler in mind whenever we designed this. We had the American fishery uh, in mind whenever we designed this. And that's what we were really shooting for as we moved forward uh, in the design of this rod. So moving on, you'll see that the guides are actually a spiral guide uh, wrap. And we have a few reasons why we went with the spiral. Um, number one reason, it's to keep the line off of the blank. So the line stays off of the blank while you're fishing. The next thing is, as your line, as you're, as you're slow pitch jigging, you'll find that your line will come over top of the tip of your rod. And once it does that, being that this rod is spiral wrapped, because the guides are at the bottom, by, you get to, by the time you get to the tip, the line's just going to fall off. Um, I don't know how much of this rings true, but they say that the, because the line goes straight down from the tip, um, it, it gives you a little level of balance there since the line is going right over um, the tip instead of going over the rod and then the tip. The next thing that I want to show you guys is that the tip of this rod, and I'll give you a close up of it, is, is something that is not common, it hasn't been around for a long time, and it's a flanged tip. So the tip of the rod, it's not just one, um, you know, it's not just one piece that pops in. It's actually flanged in there like this and it grabs on both sides of, of the uh, tip. So it's, it's a great improvement. It's something that um, we're happy to have on our rod and we think it's going to be uh, a lot more durable than the traditional tip. You're not going to see the inner ring pop out. So this rod is seven foot. It comes in power zero through four. So it's zero, one, two, three, and four. Zero being the lightest, four being the heaviest. Um, at seven foot, and this rod is one piece. And one cool added little bell and whistle that we added to this rod is a hook keeper. Um, this is a patented design, comes from an um, American uh, manufacturer. Um, and so once you unthread your jig from you know, from your rod and your reel, you can go ahead, you can hook your assist hooks or your swivel right into here. If you guys could see my camera compared to this one, you guys would know that we're the real deal. <laughs> oh boy, what do you think, Chris? I'm thinking. <laughs> Today is the day that we are headed over to RJ Boyle's studio. We are stocking his studio with, uh, it's a tackle shop and a studio, and we're stocking him with Johnny Jigs. He's got a great spread of cherry picked jigs that we picked out for him to put inside his store, as well as he has a YouTube channel. It's a paid subscription, but you get a lot of great info on there. And Chris and I did a four part series for him on slow pitch jigging. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You could also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If you like our videos, leave us a comment in the comment section below or hit a thumbs up for us. Thanks for watching and jig on.